Hey guys, today I'm going to be running you through the King Venom uh, muzzle and the cuts we make to cut all our parts and pieces in. So obviously we cut the line anchor in. Uh, we've got the pin which uh, the line hooks under before it goes over the top of the shaft being an open muzzle spear gun. We've got our rod saw. This cuts the line recess in at the end of the muzzle. And then we obviously cut the, the front of the muzzle on an angle to create, uh, I guess it's unique shape. So what you want to do is if you've got access to a bandsaw, uh, make sure that you're using an, a, a new or almost new blade. Uh, carbon, like I said, is very delicate. However, um, you know, we do make these guns very robust, but still the process of cutting all these components in is a very delicate process. Uh, one mistake and it's basically game over. Unfortunately, working with carbon isn't as forgiving as timber. Um, so yeah, when we're making these cuts, uh, we've really got to make sure that everything's done right. Using sharp uh, tools, i.e. sharp bandsaw blade, a sharp drill bit. So we use a brand new three mil drill bit and rod saw and that. It, it prevents any slippage, any mistakes um, using a very sharp tool. So the, I was going to demonstrate, however, our video crashed yesterday. Um, so basically we set the bandsaw up, we create an angle. When you're cutting it, you want to make sure that you have an angle that's sufficient, that you're not going to have any creases in your line as it runs over the edges of your muzzle. So we normally cut it on a 35 degree angle, all our muzzles. Um, some people cut it less and that obviously creates that edge um, where line can obviously uh, get kinked. So yeah. Pretty much just come down on the bandsaw straight down and you cut it off. It will look like that if you can see there. So that's our 35 degree angle. Just try and get a close up. And that's it there. You can see the epoxy down there, the black epoxy. So that's it there. Um, and so what we do, the next step after this, we would take our rod saw and we, we cut in a line recess. Um, in the end of the muzzle as the line comes down under the pin over the top of the shaft and in that line recess so when you cut that in you want to make sure that your grooves are cut nice and deep so that your line doesn't kink as it goes over the edge uh, so that's the first cut we make i'll demonstrate these i'll throw the gopro on and um and film this with the gopro showing you exactly how we do this the next thing i do is we drill the pin in we take a three mil drill bit and up near the end of the muzzle um, we use some tape, I'll film this again on the GoPro. Uh, we just tape a section there, drill a hole through it, a bit of super glue and then we push the pin in, <coughs> hammer it in, um, just a small stainless pin and bend it over as such. Once again I'll demonstrate that on the GoPro. So that's it, So line, and then the next thing, sorry, um, is the line anchor. So we get on our milling machine, um, I'll also film this and basically we mill in a slot for our line anchor uh, which obviously either connects your bungee or uh, acts for your line to go over as you double wrap it. So that's the cut, so you've got the, the line recess, the pin and that one. We obviously smooth this off and we cover this end. Now we have been cover, covering these in Sikaflex for a bit of a different look. Um, however, you can paint it in a two pack epoxy uh, paint for that one. So that's pretty much it um, on the, that end of the, uh, the muzzle. Um, and then the last thing we do is obviously we've got this slot here, which is our band slot. So what we'll do is we'll get on the mill. Uh, usually we do that at the same time we do the line anchor and we'll mill that, that slot out uh, to fit three 16 mil bands. So what I'm gonna do now is I'll finish this part of the video. I'll throw the GoPro on and we'll go from there. The first thing you wanna do is get the barrel somewhere where you can lock it in nice and tight. So I'm talking against the wall between your legs and on a bench. So that way you've got almost three points of contact on this uh, barrel. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna start, well I start, I start on the lower part first. And I'll just try and cut that first little section in. What you don't wanna do here, I use my thumb to guide it and I go very slowly to begin with because what can happen, if you slip out here this way or that way, you're gonna scratch the epoxy finish on the barrel. Uh, which isn't good. So what you want to do is just start out by cutting it. Now what I do is I usually go uh, about a half a centimetre, about five mil, 
from the end of the last part of the track. So that's where I start mine, and I start with the bottom first, cut that in, nice and slow, come down a bit more. So what you're trying to do is cut a line guide in here so that when the line comes up and over the top and comes down here, there's no major corner or, or anywhere it's gonna kink. If you cut the muzzle too square, what happens is if, if you don't cut the line guide in good enough, it's, it's a, almost a right angle that your line's going over. So if you're using, um, di uh, sorry, not Dyneema, if you're using cable or using uh, heavy duty monofilament, you're gonna get a kink there, which isn't obviously good for your setup. So once I've done a nice cut down the bottom there, I just slowly start working my way up towards the top, just a nice line. Keep coming down. So as you can see, we've got a nice line forming there, uh, going up towards the top. So you just wanna keep working that line. You will find that the rod saw does bend slightly, so make sure you might just need to keep swapping it around for a straight bit and then straighten it back out. If you're, if you're cutting it in with a bent, you're gonna get a, <coughs> you're gonna get a really funny track or you know a really deep wide track. So just keep looking for a straight bit or straighten it up as you're going. So you can see we've hit that top bit of carbon there now. As you can see guys, the carbon we use is extremely thick, um, so it is quite hard to get through that that part of the barrel. So working that top part now. see we've got a nice deep track there probably as deep as I want to go for the moment um, it actually looks pretty good see there's a little bit of epoxy there Still so we obviously fill that so I'm pretty happy with that guys so as you can see that track there is nice and deep for your mono so the mono obviously comes over the top and down through there. Yeah, and you can see here, what I've done is I've worked a really rounded section there. So as your mono comes over and down, it's almost, yeah, on a 30 degree angle, it's actually really good. So that's it guys, as you can see, we've just cut the line recess in. Next, what we'll do is the pin. All right guys, so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna show you how to drill the line pin in. So normally, I do all my work on my bench that's over near the window. You would have seen it in a few pics and videos. Um, today, for demonstration purposes, I've got the lighting and the background and everything set up here. So normally we get a bit more natural light, but today we're just uh, gonna do this as best we can. So the first thing we do um, when we're about to drill the pin in is I get some, some clear tape as you can see, and just cover the section that I'm working on. Just uh, helps with any glue run and stuff like that. Next, as I mentioned before, nice sharp drill bit. So this drill bit here is a three mil drill bit. Um, pretty close to new, um, but if I would recommend if you're doing this for the first time, definitely get a brand new drill bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drill 
this pinhole. So normally come back about half an inch as such. Um, and you want to come down about half a minute where the track groove is, you want, sorry, not the groove, uh, where the rail is, you want to come down about, yeah, about a quarter of an inch down there, or about five mil down that way. So I just normally to start. Nice little hole, as you can see. So what you want to do is, you, as you drill through this, you want to drill down into the carbon um, you don't want to come out this end, obviously, because um, that would be bad. So you want to drill in, in this way. So make sure you back far enough. Obviously the line will hook under there, go over the top of the shaft. So you want to just give it a bit of angle going across on a 45. You don't want to drill it right up the end here so that you've got a 90 degree kink in your mono. Right, hopefully you can still see. You don't want to clean the hole out too much. So that's it there, if you can see that hole guys. So nice clean hole, as you can see there's no roughage on the outside. Already got our pin, uh, which is pre-bent, just using a vise and a hammer. What you want to do here guys is you got your, pr your pin, got your glue, a Loctite or, or similar glue, um, I would rec highly recommend put that pin in. So what you want to do is just take off the cap and you just want to put not too much, wipe the excess. Just take a small hammer. So as you can see, the pin's in there, guys. So what you want to do now, obviously we can bash this pretty hard. We do overbuild these carbon barrels. Um, if you are using a, a carbon barrel that is thick enough, then you shouldn't have any dramas about breaking it because you know how strong it is. We can sit a car on top of these. So once you've got your pin in, um, obviously the glue sets pretty quick. Then just, just want to bend it over um, just so that your line can hook underneath. So that's pretty much how we get the pin in, guys. Um, obviously you can see how strong our carbon is just by how much we've just belted it there. Then you just want to lift this up, it'll split on the pin, like such. And then just peel that off and as you can see guys we've got a nice clean, just zoom in a bit on the camera. Okay, can you see that there? Nice clean hole there. So that's what you're aiming for guys. Um, and what we do is we just get on the buffing wheel and we just take that burr off where we've been bashing the pin. Right, next step. Alrighty, so I've got the mill set up. Uh, it's all dialed in, ready to go. What I'm going to do now is mill out the, the line guide slot. So what we do for this is we use a half inch drill bit, that's the width of our line anchor. And we mill uh, the band slot. So what I normally do is I normally measure where we want to put it in place because the last thing you want to do is do it too far down the barrel and, and then one of your screw holes is actually going to go into the plug. You want to make sure both of them go into the epoxy. So what I'm going to do now is I'll mill this band slot out. Um, I'll probably speed up the video a little bit. Uh, it does take a little bit to get it perfect and then um, we'll go from there. Up there, so I'll just check that again. Perfect. So as you can see, it's sitting in there, not moving around. So now it's time to put that in. So as you can see, we've got one cut, we've got the pin in, and we've got that. So what I'm going to do now, before I actually connect the uh, line guide or or the pop, so I normally sicker flex and then uh, screw this in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mill out the band slot 
right? But that takes a, a fair while, so what I might do is I might just do that, come back to it at the end, and then show you how we tidy everything up with the Dremel. So as you can see guys, there's the slot, um, it's been cut in. And now it's ready, <clears throat> what we're gonna do is we'll actually um, get the Dremel onto this, onto this slot here, and um, I'll show you how we make this all smooth and we also cut this back here for the uh, bands to lay in. Right, we've roughly cut our band slot in, uh, as well as our line anchor slot. As you can see, the band slots for three bands. So pretty much what we're gonna do now is use the Dremel tool um, I'm going to use the smaller one for this demonstration, it's not as loud. Um, but what we do is we cut this, so we machine this out to make it all nice and smooth and look pretty. Um, originally we used to get these muzzles, when I first bought the company we were getting these muzzles made in Taiwan. Uh, the factory used to make them for us, however, when I took over um, we did have quality control issues, so I've basically been doing these ourselves. Uh, for a very long time and then this is where you also have to be careful guys because the Dremel can slip out and scratch the outer epoxy and you don't want to do that So what you want to do with them, you just want to make sure they're even. They both come back. That one's probably a bit longer, so we'll just go with this one again. Like okay, it's a bit better. So as you can see, guys, that's really starting to take shape. You still got pretty sharp edges around here so what I do is I go around and I'll, I'll chamfer them off now.
So as you can see guys, that's our band slot's almost done. See it's coming up nice and smooth around the edges. Obviously needs a paint. But that's pretty much taken shape. So what I'll do is I'll just finish this off and then um, we'll clean up this little section here a bit. Go from there. So as you can see, we have finished uh, all the cuts on the King Venom muzzle. Uh, we've cut out the band slot, we've cut the end off, we've cut the line recess in, and we've also drilled the hole for the pin. Um, I went a bit ahead of myself and I actually put the pin in, um, which you would have seen. Um, but what I'll do now is, this will be the end of this video, this will be part two. Uh, next video, what we'll do is we'll paint, paint the muzzle up, I'll do the sicker flex on the end to show you how we do that. And then, uh, what? Well, yeah, once it's painted um, and everything like that, and then I'll fit the line anchor and show you how we do that. So that'll be the the, uh, the King Venom, I guess the muzzle end complete, and then we'll finish off the back end and the rigging. So yeah, stay tuned. We'll probably do that over maybe one or two more videos, um, so they don't go too long. Cheers.